Golf courses are no strangers to wildlife. Here in the UK, you might expect to see a few harmless species wandering around as you're teeing off for a morning round. Some of the things you might see include birds, badgers, foxes, and if you're lucky, perhaps some deer. Although at different golf courses around the world, the wildlife can of course get a little bit more exotic. American golf courses are regularly frequented by alligators, and I've been lucky enough to experience this firsthand. Although, don't worry guys, you aren't gonna see me on the PGA Tour anytime soon. Look at the slice on that, shameful. African golf courses can also get a little hectic at times with hippos and baboons often sighted. And there was even a full-blown nature documentary reenaction on a South African golf course last year where a lion pride took down a giraffe on the third hole only for carnage to ensue when a hyena clan came in to steal it. Talk about immovable obstruction. Although, have you ever heard of the bizarre story of the golf course that was home to sharks? For nearly 20 years, a group of bull sharks called this relatively small body of water on a golf course in Australia home. But how did they get there in the first place? How did they survive for that long? And why did they mysteriously disappear? Welcome back to another Shark Bites episode, everyone. This story I'm gonna to talk to you guys about today is a proper weird one. And although it is weird, it's also an amazing case study that can be used by scientists to understand bull sharks and their tolerance of freshwater habitats. Just before we start though, with Christmas and the holidays just around the corner, I wanna point you guys all to the Shark Bites merch store and to follow. We've got a ton of merch available now on the merch store so if you've got any loved ones that really really enjoy shark bites make sure you head over to that merch store for some great deals alongside this as some of you may know already i'm a brand ambassador for Farlow, the animal tracking bracelet company they have these really cool bracelets that come with a qr code for tracking whatever animal you choose being a brand ambassador for Farlow means i get to give you some sweet discounts so if you have a look in the description for this video you'll find a link that will take you straight to Farlow and that is gonna automatically apply a 20% discount on everything that you have in your basket. You can also use the Sharp Bites 20 discount code, but I would much prefer it if you use the link that's in the description below. As always, all the info that you need is also in the description, so if you're struggling to think of what to get your loved ones this holiday season, then make sure you check it out. Okay, God, I really do hate doing that. Anyway, where were we? Golf course bull sharks. Right, let's head back all the way to 1996. I was two years old at the time, England had just crashed out of the Euros on penalties to Germany and an Australian golf course groundkeeper was about to make an astonishing discovery on the 14th hole of Carbrook Golf Club. A small number of juvenile bull sharks were found to be swimming around in one of the water hazards on the golf course. For the first few years after their discovery it was believed by many to just be a myth the sharks had only supposedly been seen by the groundskeepers and a few golfers here or there. And the lake itself, although considered to be relatively small, was still around 700 meters long and 400 meters wide. So initially it would have been pretty tricky to spot these sharks, but as time went on, the sharks got bigger and bolder and they started being spotted right up close to the banks in the shallows. The Carbrook shark water hazard was no longer a myth and when the media cottoned onto the story, the bull shark golf course became globally renowned. But how did they even get there in the first place? Well, no one knows for 100% certainty, but the best bet is flooding. Carbrook sits right alongside two rivers, the Albert and the Logan. Bull sharks were first officially reported in these river systems back in 1957 and were later found to have traveled 52 kilometers inland. There was also a fatal unidentified shark attack in a town called Loganholm, which is just a little bit further inland than the golf course back in 1903. And even though the species couldn't be identified at the time based on its size, which was 2.7 meters and its location, it would suggest it was almost certainly a bull shark. Importantly here, this means the river system isn't just being used by juvenile bull sharks for safety. It may also be a birthing ground for adult individuals. So bull sharks have been in this river system for at least to our knowledge anyway, the last 120 years. And to be honest, probably for a very long time before that as well. The golf course in question was inundated with water three times over a five year period between 1991 and 1996 because the Albert and Logan rivers had burst their banks. So here's a picture of what the golf course is supposed to look like under normal conditions. And here's what it looks like when those rivers burst their banks. Inundated is definitely the right word. We've even got a picture here of the golf course during one of those flood events in the 90s. I believe this one was from May 1996. So given the date of their first sighting and the severity of the flood in May 1996, I would say it's a pretty good bet that the sharks ended up in the lake 
after those floods in 96. And when the flood waters receded, the sharks found themselves trapped within that lake. And it just so happens that those rivers that caused all the flooding didn't burst their banks again until 2013, which meant the sharks remained as an isolated population in the Gulf Coast Lake, undisturbed, for 17 years. At the time of their arrival in 1996, based on some of their size estimations, all of the sharks that ended up in the lake were thought to be juvenile individuals. And the most reliable estimate of their population number was six. This is based off interviews with the golf course groundskeepers from down the years who spent the most time with the sharks. But how on earth were at least six individual bull sharks able to survive in a lake of that size for that long? Well, initially, it wouldn't have been that difficult. Juvenile bull sharks are, of course, smaller individuals, so don't have to eat as much to survive. When the golf course flooded and all the sharks came in, at the same time, other freshwater fish species would have been translocated into that golf course lake as well. As well as this, the lake already had a bunch of different freshwater fish species in there already. There were grey mullets, yellowfin bream, tarpon, mangrove red snapper, all sorts. And these fish would have had a decent population structure. They'd have been breeding with each other and laying eggs, which means the food supply would have been large enough for those bulls to survive. As a little side note here, some scientists would go on to calculate exactly how much fish these bull sharks would need to eat as they got larger. Based on their energy expenditure in the lake and their size as they got bigger, they worked out that six bull sharks would need to eat half a ton of fish per year to be able to survive. Half a ton of fish. <laughs> I love how there's someone out there that's gone to the effort to work that out. But also alongside the fish that they were eating, it was pretty well documented that the golf course staff would feed them from time to time. Chicken and pork was occasionally tossed into the lake by the staff members to try and draw the sharks into the shallows where they could be pictured and videoed. It's pretty unlikely though that without the fish in the lake, the sharks would be able to survive solely on a diet of chicken and pork scraps. There just isn't enough nutrients in those food items for the sharks to meet their own energy demands. But with the ready supply of all those fish species that I mentioned earlier, the sharks were not only just able to survive, but actively thrive in the lake. The majority of the individuals as the years went by only grew to just shy of two meters. I say only, that's still impressive. I mean, have a look at the door in the room that you're in right now. That's about the size of most of these sharks. Although at least one of the sharks got even bigger than that. Obviously it's tricky to measure the exact size of these sharks without a good old fashioned measuring tape, but you can get fairly close estimates with just your eyes. And there were a few people that reported there were some sharks in the lake that were nearly three meters long. This was later backed up when one of the golf club staff members spotted an individual that had died. He managed to retrieve the shark and get it onto dry land where he measured it to be 2.7 meters long. That's not too far away from those three meter estimates. For years, the sharks were considered to be the mascots for the golf club and it drew people in from all over the world. They were able to put up entertaining signs on the entrance to the course warning of their deadly hazards. And of course, they made sure to put up signs on the lake itself warning golfers to not try any in-water shots, no matter how close it was to the bank. As the sharks got bigger and reached sexual maturity, it was suggested perhaps the sharks were breeding within the lake itself. Although no evidence of reproduction was found by any of the scientists who investigated this case study. Bull sharks don't really tend to reproduce in freshwater habitats. They'll usually do that in either saltwater or estuarine habitats like the mouth of a river. Generally, they only tend to feed or give birth in freshwater water environment. And even if they had been reproducing in there, the genetic variability of six individuals is probably way too low to produce a continuous population. But over those 17 years, the bull sharks in that lake broke every known record for the amount of time that that species can spend in fresh water. In the past, we've thought that adult bull sharks spend short periods of time in low salinity water, perhaps to give birth or to feed before they head back out to sea. We did think, to be fair, that juvenile individuals could spend a few years in fresh water before they started getting a bit bigger and then decide to head out to sea. But these bull sharks in the lake were there for at least 17 years. That's a crazy amount of time. And it probably tells us there's no upper limit for the amount of time that bull sharks 
sharks can spend in freshwater. And that the limiting factor in their time spent in freshwater isn't to do with physiological constraints, but is mostly down to environmental factors, i.e. food availability. So in the wild, when bulls decide to move back out to open water, it's probably because prey sources in their freshwater habitat have dwindled, and they need to go back out to sea where the food is more plentiful. There are other case studies similar to this one from around the world, one in South Africa at St. Lucia, and then another one in Panama at Lake Bayano. But these case studies were over a much shorter length than the golf course bull sharks. I think they were only around four years compared to the 17 years that we've got on show here. Sadly, at some point, the sharks in the golf course lake mysteriously disappeared. No one knows the exact date at which it happened, but the last reliable sighting of a bull shark in the lake came all the way back in 2015. That's nearly nine years ago. Several theories cropped up trying to explain their disappearance one of which was the same theory as to how they got there in the first place. In 2013, the Logan River burst its banks again and the golf course was flooded and many people believe that the majority of the sharks that were in there at that point managed to get back out into the river system. Although a few individuals clearly didn't manage to escape as at least one of them was spotted in 2015. But considering that 2015 sighting was the last reliable one, it probably tells us that there weren't that many left in there. The golf course staff had tried to use their bait to bring any sharks that might still be in the lake to the banks, but they had no luck. Other theories suggest that any remaining sharks succumbed to illness and disease, and instead of floating to the surface, sank to the bottom where it would be impossible to see them. And some even say a third possibility is illegal fishing activities. According to the staff at the golf club, illegal fishing was the cause of death of at least one of the bull sharks in the years that they were active in the lake. So some have posed that as the final nail in the coffin for the golf club bull sharks. In reality, it's entirely possible that it was a combination of all three of those factors that led to their disappearance from the lake. But since their last known sighting in 2015, there has been one major flooding event on that golf course, which happened in 2022. And there's always a chance that during that flooding event, more juvenile bull sharks were displaced from the river system back into the lake. I think one of the best ways that we can easily test this now, instead of chucking bait into the lake and hoping one shows up, is eDNA. eDNA, otherwise known as environmental DNA, is an emerging method that's been used by shark scientists in recent years to assess the presence or absence of a species in a specific area. By taking just a sample of the water, scientists can tell what species are present and what species are absent, and it works over a pretty large area as well. I suppose eDNA can occasionally be a little bit expensive, but it would be really interesting for someone who's out there in Australia, near Brisbane, to go and check this out just to see. For now it's unknown whether Carbrook Golf Course has any sharks and if they don't whether they will ever have any again. But the bulls they did have for that period of time gave us an unbelievable insight into the adaptability of these sharks. They truly are one of the real powerhouses of the shark world. What do you make of this crazy story then? Have you ever heard of the golf course bull sharks before? Do you reckon the 2022 flooding event has brought more sharks into the lake? Let me know in the comments. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and make sure you subscribe to the channel below. I can still see there's a few of you out there that aren't subscribed to Shark Bites yet, so if you're enjoying the content, please do consider hitting that big red subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. But before you click off, if you enjoyed today's video all about bull sharks and you want to learn a little bit more about them, then you're going to want to click on this video right here. This one here is our Shark Bites creature feature on bull sharks. And in it, you've got nine minutes of crazy facts all about this shark species. If I don't say so myself, I think it's well worth your time. So give it a watch here.